The Great Search, okay. brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. We do these every single week. Lady Ada uses her superpowers of the DigiKey site to search for the things you need. This week is Rotary Encoder. Right, so this project here, uh, this is a little USB to Rotary Encoder doodad that I put together. Um, super fun for just, you plug it inside of your laptop and you've got a little knob. Rotary Encoders are neat because they go all the way around, as you see here. Unlike potentiometers that only go, you know, from minimum to maximum, maybe 270, uh, degrees at a 360. Uh, this can go round and round and round and round. There's a couple of trade-offs. One is uh, it's only relative. You, you don't know where it's pointing. It's got, this has a little pointer on it. But that pointer, this doesn't know where that pointer is pointing. All it knows is like it went left one, it went right one, or clockwise, counterclockwise, or witter shins, or whatever the opposite of witter shins is. And um, another thing is, is that it's not smooth. It's got little detents, or at least this one does. And, and, you know, you can't hear it, but there's a little bit of like a tick, tick every time I move it. It only moves a couple, uh, it only moves into certain orientations. It's not smooth like potentiometer. Um, another thing you can customize is how many of those little ticks, detents, there are per rotation. So this one has 24. I have it like 24, but there's ones that do 12. There's ones that do more. 12 and 24 are kind of the most common though. Uh, one thing that this rotary encoder has that is really nice is it's got a clicky switch built into it. So, um, you know, I can, you can see I'm pressing it. The hat goes down just a little bit, but it's a nice clicky switch. If you're an engineer and you have an oscilloscope, the, there's like 18 uh, rotary encoders on a scope. Um, this is the uh, D-shaft. Why is it called D-shaft? Because it's kind of like a D-shape. Uh, note that some rotary encoders have T18, they have knurled shafts. You gotta pick one or the other. Um, rotary encoders tend to have D and potentiometers tend to have T18. But you know, if you want to use a knob from a potentiometer and a rotary encoder or vice versa, just make sure that the um, knob matches the shaft because like, you can tell this is a D shaft, there's a, there's a D shape cutout. And then if you have a, a knurled or, or T18 style, it looks like a little star with uh, 18 splines on it. So just something to watch for. But we're gonna, we're gonna look for a very common rotary encoder. Again, we want one with detents. I like, I like the detents. Um, I want it to have the switch built in. I want it to have a D shaft and uh, I want it to have 24 um, detents per rotation. So, to the DigiKey, let's go. Okay, so uh, let's search for encoder. So one thing to note, uh, encoder means a lot of things, a lot of encoders in electronics. So um, we do want the encoder category, but when you go here, you might be a little like, you know, like, oh my goodness, what, what are these things? What is this? This is not what I'm looking for. These are huge what, what's going on? These are, you know, um, industrial encoders for motors and servos. So just, you know, be aware, like the same thing that you might use and, and twist and turn to, to set your FM station or to um, adjust your, um, the user interface for your oscilloscope is also used in motors to tell what the rotation and orientation is. And they are different. I mean, they're, they're similar in concept, but um, they're often one a lot more expensive and they're kind of huge and they sometimes use optical or absolute um, orientation or they're magnetic not mechanical we just want a simple mechanical encoder so the the way you know I mean you can scroll down and eventually maybe you'd find one but there's also I mean this is I don't know basically there's all these massive encoders but other than active we always like to pick active um, what you want is called a, so there's all these different types over here. You see these types over here. We want quadrature incremental or sometimes, sometimes called incremental, but in this case it's, only, it's called quadrature incremental. What that means is there's two pins um, and so they're, you're like, wait, there's two pins, why is it quad? It's because each one can be high or low, and so you have four total states. Uh, two high or low for each switch, and there's two switches, two times two, four, quadrature. 
and incremental because you again only know when you're turning counterclockwise or clockwise you don't know the absolute location are there situations you want absolute absolute encoders yes they're not going to be a dollar or two they're going to be quite expensive okay so then um let's click accept to apply all okay now we're starting to see okay yeah these are starting to look a little bit more like what we want and there's you know a ton of um different encoders like this is a you know common style note you see this one has the t18 knob um i can't mouse over but you know you if you look at the the knob it's got like knurls on it whereas if you look at this one it's pretty clearly got the d shaft it's a, it's a cut circle okay so next up uh let's look for ones that are you know in stock right now and uh okay so we have a couple options here again i want the built-in switch you pay a little more for built-in switch but i like it so let's get the switch and detents i like detents too so let's pick that um next up uh there's you know two different orientations you can have them stick out or you can have them stick up um for this project for the usb um uh, rotary trinky i want it this way which is vertical this is a right angle so let's go vertical well oh, what's users I'm, what is user selectable oh because it got wires on it yeah okay that's cool yeah that's fair it is user selectable technically that's true uh but we want uh we want vertical okay okay so we got we're starting to pare down the options i think we have uh what's the width in index the width index not width as in why width is in width index i guess it's a width index sorry where where do you see that i don't know that was a question from the chat oh sometimes um well i don't know exactly what they're referring to but um see how this one has a little bit of a a nubbin that sticks out to the right it's kind of like right at the right above the three pins there's a little bit of a nubbin that's often called the indexer like it's a little index nub and it helps seed it into like this one doesn't have that nub in it's hard to explain what it is but you'll know when you see it oh this is kind of cool this one is a uh, translucent you can have uh, led shine through i don't see i don't see others with a nub in but okay so let's uh sorry gotta get back to thing okay next up pulses per revolution again you can choose how many Note that there's a bunch of options, but really there's only like 12 and 24. Those are, those are I, I don't really see a lot with others. So let's do that. Um, okay, looking good. And then um, rotational life. You'll pay more for rotational life as expected. Uh, you know, it, it sort of depends on whether, you know, how often people are going to be tweaking the thing, uh, do the math on, you know, expected use per day. I will say that um, you know my my old oscilloscope, not this one, but uh, the selector knob for the first channel, the yellow channel, um, did the rotary encoder did eventually die because I was using it, you know, maybe like an hour a day up to I'd be I'd be setting the scale for the first channel, and eventually it uh, it did get really flaky, and so you know I now have to kind of just hold it in the right way when I twist it. Uh, hopefully I'll, I'll replace it maybe one of these desk alleviators i'll i'll do that um okay next up uh so we don't want knurled end we want flatted i don't remember the diameter but i'm going to just pick these two i don't want the illuminated although that's like super cool maybe some other day and then um at this point i'm kind of like nothing else really matters i you know oh, i want mechanical for sure let me pick mechanical optical um extremely reliable more expensive they use optical switches and then let's just uh sort by price and you know you can see that you can get ones with kind of like this little stubby uh or you know slightly stubby or longer um shafts uh this one has a panel mount screw so you see it's threaded Whereas this one does not. It, it just depends on what you want it to look like. If you have it sticking out of a, a panel, you don't want those threads because it could not look so great. Um, but you know, this one is, is inexpensive and, and you know, maybe I would pick this one to start. Um, price is about a dollar and it goes down to about 60 cents in quantity. And uh, it looks fine. Uh, so you'll see it's got the three pins here. 
Um, those are the switches, so those are common, and then A and B are used as the uh, rotational detection. And then up here is the separate switch, the switch when you uh, press into the shaft, it closes those two pins. And uh, so yeah, I think this is gonna be a good, um, looks, you know, it's kind of a generic, but a good rotary encoder. Depending on your needs, you know, keep looking around about, you know, how many detents or how many pulses, whether you want detents, you want illuminated or not. Lots of rotary encoder options. It's a very, very popular user interface. So that's the great search for rotary encoders. Where